So one of the things that we want to do is remember that when we're solving polynomial equations, the first thing we have to do is factor the equation completely. If it's already in linear factored form, then we can just set each linear factor equal to zero. If it's not, we got to get it there first. Also, sometimes when you factor, you come up with a quadratic that can't easily be factored. And therefore, then you're going to use the quadratic formula. A final thing to keep in mind, the degree of the polynomial equals the number of zeros, roots, or solutions to your polynomial. So if you have a polynomial of degree four, you'll have four solutions. They may be real, they may be imaginary, or some may be real and some may be imaginary, but you would still have four solutions. So let's get started with an example. All right, our first example, x cubed plus 13x equals 10x squared. As we look at this, this is not in standard form. So the first thing we're going to do is put it in standard form. That means we need to take the 10x squared and move it to the left side of the equal sign. Of course, when I move it, I have to change my sign. So my equation becomes x cubed minus 10x squared plus 13x equals 0. Now, as I'm looking at this, I have a polynomial with three terms. And I notice that all three terms have an x in common. So the first thing that we want to do is factor out the x. So we'll have x times the quantity of x squared minus 10x plus 13. And this equals 0. Notice that I still write equals 0 each time. I can't leave that part off. Now, I have that x, and I have the quadratic x squared minus 10x plus 13. As I look at that, in order to factor it, I would have to know what are factors of a positive 13 that when I add them together, I get a negative 10. Well, since 13 is a prime number, the only factors are 1 and 13, or a negative 1 and negative 13. Either way, if I add those together, I'm not going to get negative 10. I'm either going to get a positive 14 or a negative 14. So I cannot factor this quadratic. What I can do is take the quadratic and set it equal to 0, and take that x that's outside of the quadratic and set it equal to 0. So that's the next step. x equals 0. So x equals 0. But I also have x squared minus 10x plus 13 equals 0. And as we talked about, we can't factor that. So since we can't factor it, the thing that we want to do is use the quadratic formula. But we might not remember what the quadratic formula is. So we left a little note here for us to help remind us. So the quadratic formula says that when I have a quadratic equation in standard form, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So that's what we're going to do is identify first a, b, and c. So if I'm looking at it, the a goes with the x squared term. Since I don't see a number in front of x squared term, a equals 1. b is the coefficient of the x term. When I'm looking at it, it looks like it could be just 10x, but it's not. It's negative 10x because we have the minus in front of it. So b is just the coefficient, which is negative 10. And c is our constant term. That's 13. So c equals 13. Now what we need to do is substitute these values for a, b, and c into our quadratic formula. So when we do that, we say that x equals the opposite of b. So the opposite of negative 10 is a positive 10. So it equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 
10 squared, which is 100, minus 4 times 1 times 13, which is really 4 times 13, which is 52. And this whole expression here in my numerator goes over, and in my denominator I have 2 times 1, which is 2. Now I need to simplify this. So the first thing I want to do is subtract 52 from 100. And we get that x equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 48 all over 2. Now, if we didn't have to simplify and put this in reduced terms, we would be done. But we always have to simplify and use reduced terms. So the next thing that we want to do here is look and see if there's a way that we can simplify the square root of 48. Now we know that 48 is not a perfect square. In other words, not a number that I can multiply by itself and get 48. So instead what I want to do is look and see if there are any perfect squares I can divide out of 48. For instance, 48 is evenly divisible by 16. Here's what that means. That means that the square root of 48 can be factored to be the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Now, the reason that's significant is because 16 is a perfect square. That means that the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of, 38, or of 3 is just the square root of 3. So we write that as the square root of 3. That means that I can rewrite the square root of 48 to be 4 times the square root of 3. So when I come back to my equation, I'm going to write that x equals, and I'm doing two things here. I'm going to separate this into two fractions. So x equals 10 divided by 2 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3 divided by 2. Now I did this because I wanted to separate these so I can reduce this further. In other words, I know that 10 and 4 are both divisible by 2. And I want to make sure that when I reduce it, I reduce it properly. So I have to take 10 and divide it by 2. And I'm going to take 4 times the square root of 3 and also divide it by 2. So in other words, x equals 10 divided by 2 is 5 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3 divided by 2, which is actually 2 times the square root of 3. And the reason it's 2 times the square root of 3 is because 4 can be divided by 2 evenly. It's 2. So when I reduce, my answer is 5 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. If you're having a little bit of trouble with this, you want to take the time to go back and look again. But one more time, what we want to do is, remember we were trying to find the solution of our quadratic. I'm sorry, of our polynomial. So the solutions are 0, 5, minus 2 times the square root of 3, and 5 plus 2 times the square root of 3. We have three solutions, and we have a polynomial of degree 3. So as I scroll back up, we can see our polynomial was x cubed, degree of 3, three solutions, polynomial, and the degree of 3. Okay, so maybe you want to take some time and go back over it.